All right, Shalom. Yah, Yah, Shalom. Shalom to the brothers that are hopeful and like, scattered across the four corners of this earth. It's Brother Karat Zala. Come back to you with these precepts. As you can see, we are still in Babylon, the great Neo-Roman Empire, right? The Roman Empire revised as what we call America today, right? This wicked, for God-forsaken um, country, this kingdom where all types of madness and folly and evils um, run rapid, right? This place is, is polluted. It's filthy, right? It's disgusting. Is there's no there's no comfort in here. There's nothing of peace. There's no security. There's nothing righteous. There's nothing holy. Everything here is defiled, right? That's why this place has to be destroyed, okay? Because fire is is a purifying agent, and that's what the Most High is going to do via thermonuclear missiles to purge America to make it America so called great again. He has to burn it, right? So let's go right into the precepts. Let's go into the Book of Isaiah, the 34th chapter, right? Let's talk about America. Okay, this is the book of Isaiah, chapter 34, and I'm going to start at verse 1. It says, Come near ye nations to hear, and hearken ye people. Let the earth hear, and all that is therein, the world and all things that come forth of it, right? Because we're preaching this truth across the whole world, right? In other countries, you got people in Africa, people in Tokyo, Japan, Asia, Europe, Australia, Antarctica, uh, anywhere you can think of, Europe, all these places, this truth is going out via through the internet, right? Verse 2, for the indignation of Yahweh is upon all nations and his fury upon all their armies, right? The indignation means the Most High's wrath is heavily, his heavily wrath is on all these nations that have persecuted and slandered and mocked and ridiculed and whipped, raped, robbed and murdered his people, which are the so-called Black Hispanics and Native Americans. Right, his wrath is poured out on them according to Amos chapter 9 and verse 12. Right? Verse 3. Their slain also shall be cast out, and their stink shall come up out of their carcasses, and the mountains shall be melted with their blood. Right? And that mountain is talking about their kingdom. So he said their kingdom is going to be melted with their blood, meaning that their death, their kingdom is going to fall via by their blood shatter. Right? Their blood being spilled. Right? That's what it means. Okay? Verse 4. And all the host of heaven shall be dissolved, and the heavens shall be rolled together as a scroll, and all their host shall fall down as the leaf fall up from like it, as the leaf fall up off from the vine, and as a falling fig from the fig tree. Right? What is that talking about? How is the most high gonna cause the heavens to, to um pass away as a scroll? Via thermonuclear missiles. This is talking about a mushroom cloud. After a missile has hit this place, it's gonna this kingdom is gonna fall away. Cause it's not just gonna be one missile at a time. It's gonna be multiple missiles being shot. According to the book of Revelation, it says it's gonna be a hundred million missiles shot over here in America and bombed and destroyed, right? That's why it's gonna pass away as a scroll. It's not gonna be nothing but smoke and dust, the smell of death in the air, man. It's not gonna be nothing righteous, it's not gonna be nothing like, oh, I guess it's safe to go outside. No, it's not gonna be none of that in that day, man. This place is gonna be destroyed. Right? This place is going to be destroyed. Everything in this place is going to be destroyed. All the elements, all the defilements, everything, man. Everything. Even what you, the, the air that you breathe in is going to be destroyed in this place. Because this place is polluted. The so-called white man pollutes this land and this air every damn day. Right? And he's spraying chemtrails all day and night. All day and night he's spraying chemtrails. Right? And that's not doing anything good. That's why you have so many dead trees and dead grass, man. Because these chemtrails, these chemicals, right? Anything lab made is not good. All right. And the Most High said that in the book of Job, that the so-called white man, he tries to play God. Right. That's the pride of Esau. We read the book of Obadiah. The first chapter tells you that. Right. It tells you that the pride of Esau, they deceive themselves, actually believing that they're going to be like the Most High God. That's why they're doing the cloning. That's why they clone meat, clone humans, clone whatever. They create other species. They do all these experiments. Right. They try to go out the firmament when they can't go out the firmament, actually. They're just lying to the masses with that. But they try to go beyond the firmament, try to see the windows of heaven, right? But to no avail. They can't do it. That's that's, that's out their pay grade, right? It's out their pay grade, right? Let's get back to the scriptures. So I get, I'm going to read verse 4 again. And the host of heaven shall be dissolved, and the heaven shall be rolled together as a scroll, and all their hosts shall fall down as the leaf fall up off from the vine and as a falling fig from the fig tree right nuclear missiles that's what it's talking about in the bible it's talking about nuclear missiles hitting america america's gonna its rulership this kingdom is going to pass away thermonuclear missiles and it's not going to ever come back again okay as a as a fig that fall from a tree does that fig get back on that tree eventually la -ah, it stays on the ground and then withers away and dies 
that's going to be the basis of America, right? Coming soon, right? Verse 5, for my sword shall be bathed in heaven. Behold, it shall come down upon Idumia and upon the people of my curse to judgment. Okay, now let me break this scripture down. When it says Idumia, Idumia is the Greek word of saying Edom. Okay, the Idumians, Idumia, right? That's the Edomites, okay? The so-called white man today, right? The snowman. Right, that's what it's talking about in the Bible. I do me it, so-called white man. Instead of his, his what's well, like it? We're gonna read it again. It says, "Behold, um, like it, for my sword shall be bathed in heaven. Behold, it shall come down upon I do me it. So the Most I said, his sword is gonna come down on the so-called white man. He's gonna destroy the so-called white man. Right? That's the end of the so-called white man because wherever he goes, he's a parasite. He destroys. He kills. He destroy. Man, like I said, he destroys. Man, there's nothing good. Wherever the so-called white man goes, there's nothing good happens. There is nothing nice. There is no reward. There is nothing holy that comes from the so-called white man being in the land, living freely, doing whatever he want to do. Right. And it says, and upon a people of my curse to judgment. Right. And the people of his curse, that's talking about the Israelites. Right. The wicked two thirds. He said his sword is coming down on you as well, because you had chances on chances on chances to come back to the most high God. Second Edge chapter nine and verse ten. Right. You had to, you had the liberty to repent when the door was open. But what did you do? You despised it and chose to live after your own life. According to the book of Judges, chapter 21 and verse 25, you wanted to do what you felt was right. Romans, the 10th chapter, it says that you want to establish your own righteousness instead of the righteousness that the most high God has already established. Right. So the sword is going to come on you for that. Right. Meaning you're going to be put to death. Right. And it will happen according to the book of Habakkuk, chapter two and verse three. Right. Verse six, the sword of Yahweh is filled with blood. It is made fat with fatness and with the blood of lambs and goats with the fat of the kidneys of rams. For Yahweh have a sacrifice in Basra in a great slaughter in the land of Idumia. Right. So Basra will be the chief place of Edom. OK, the chief place of Edom today will be America. because That's where mostly um, the operations of Edom takes place. It takes place over here in America. So that would be Basra today. Uh, Basra will be uh, synonymous to America today. Right. And, the, and, it, and it clarifies when it says the slaughter in the land of Idumia. This is the land of the Edomites. America is the land of the Edomites. How we know that? When you go back in history, they brought the slaves over here. They brought the Israelites, the tribe of Judah, Benjamin, Levi, Southern Kingdom. They brought them over to this land. And who was ruling it? Pale face, the Edomite. Right. That's who was ruling it. OK. The most I say he has a slaughter in the land of Idumia. Right, and we go. We go uh, wrap on that one. We're gonna go over to the book of Second Peter because that's what we're waiting for. Right, we're gonna stop it right there. We're gonna go to the book of Second Peter's. Right, because we're waiting. We're hasting for that day of the destruction of this wicked place, man. There's nothing righteous here. There's nothing holy. There's nothing set apart. There's nothing. It's just all polluted and evil. It's there's nothing holy here, man. Right, this is the book of Second Peter's, chapter three. In verse 10, and it reads, but the day of Yahweh will come as a thief in the night, meaning that you won't be able to prepare. You won't see it coming. It's just going to come, right? You don't prepare for a thief, okay? And in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up, right? Because everything in this place is going to be burned up by thermonuclear missiles. Your favorite car, your favorite house, your favorite piece of clothing, your favorite show, your favorite store is going to be burnt the hell up, man, by thermonuclear missiles. All right. And I want to touch back on when it says it comes a thief of the night. Like I said, you don't prepare for a thief of the night. But what you be prepared in, you have your clothing on. Right. You have your socks. You have your shirt. You have your pants, maybe your shoes, a jacket. Right. You, you have your clothing on. But what is the clothing that the most high wants you to have on in the day of the Lord? This truth. Right. You have you got to have on the armor of the Lord. Right. Which is faith. Right. And the commandments. That is the armor of the Lord. Sincerity. Right. Verse 11. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness? Right? So the most high is asking the question, he said, like, since all these things are going to come to pass, what spirit should your conversation be? Right? What should you be talking about? Should you be worrying about what this brother is doing, what this sister is doing, or what that household got going on, or what that household had got going on, or what this camp is doing, or what that camp is doing? Is the most high saying that's what conversation should be like? Let's read and find out. Verse 12. Looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of the Most High, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. That's what the Most High wants you to be um, talking about. That's what your conversation needs to be about. This wicked place falling, man. 
not everybody's not talking about the downfall of America. That's why we're still in this place today. Well, let me take that back. Let me not be biased, right? Because there may be some brothers who's not out there speaking the downfall of Amer America, right? But it says like the heavens shall be on fire, shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. That's what the Most High God wants you to talk about. He don't want you to be talking about the the Super Bowl. He don't want you to be talking about Usher performance at the Super Bowl. He don't want you to be talking about WrestleMania all damn day. Right now, don't get me wrong. You can indulge in those things. Just don't overly indulge in it. Right. Don't be too preoccupied with all the things that Esau produced to keep you further asleep. OK, you got to treat it like alcohol. You got to take it a little some. Right. Not all the time. OK. Well, to your discretion. Right. Some brother spirits are stronger than others. So if your brother mighty on fire and you can indulge in it and not be consumed by, and still come back to the Yahweh Bashim that was shy to the point it's not an idolatry, go for it. Right. Because there's no sin in that. Right. I would not tell you, oh, it's a sin. It's a sin. No, it's not a sin. Deuteronomy 4 and 2. OK, don't add to the word. Neither shall you diminish. Right. But let's get back to the topic. Most I said that your conversation should be about America being destroyed and, and um, the, the, new, the new heavens coming. Right. Is that new rulership, which is under the Israelites. Right. Verse 13. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth. We're in dwelling righteousness, right? That's what we're thinking about. That's what we're looking about. We're thinking about, in our conversation, we're talking about Esau being destroyed, America being destroyed, right? We're talking about Esau, this nation being destroyed, and we're talking about this rulership being destroyed, ushering in our rulership, man, ushering in the rulership of the Israelites. That's why we got to endure until the end, because that is the faith and the righteousness right there, man. That is a promise of the Most High God. We read Romans, the ninth chapter. This is a promise that will come to pass. Right, it's gonna be a new heaven, a new earth where it's gonna be dwelling righteousness. This place is destitute of righteousness, it's destitute of peace, it's destitute of love, it's destitute of respect, it's destitute of everything that the most high God said, um embodies, man. Everything that the most high God has, this place opposes it, man. The righteousness of the most high God is opposed by Esau and his land, right? But you still have people who still want to um live everyday life like this place is gonna continue forever, right. Let me get the book of Revelation chapter 14, right? It's the book of Revelation chapter 14 and verse 12, and it reads, Here's the patience of the saints. You got to be patient, right? Here are they that keep the commandments of Yahweh by Yahweh Shai and the faith in Yahweh Shai, right? We got to keep the commandments in the faith, man. That's what we have to do in these last days. We got to have a faith, you know? Always know that it's all good, even though it feels strange, man. You all know that the Most High has your back. You know, the book of Sirach chapter 2 and verse 10. When have the Most High ever forsaken those who called on his name, right? Look at the days of old for all those who called on the Most High's name. Did, they, did he deliver them not? Look at the, read the book of Job. Remember the patience of Job, like the Yahushai brother James said. Remember the patience of Job. Remember the trial of Job, what Job had to endure, what Job had to go through, right? Job went through a whole lot. He lost a whole lot. But what did the Most High God do? I'm going to read it. We're going to close out with this, man. This is some faith, right? This is faith right here. Right, let's go to the book of Job. Right? This is the book of Job, chapter 8 and verse 7. Though thy beginning was small, yet thy latter end shall greatly increase. Right? So what that mean? Your latter end greatly increase. That means that although that you're low right now, you're in a low spot, you may not have anything to your name. You may be this, you may be that, you may not have these things that others may have. But most I said you're gonna obtain it. Right? So don't force it. Don't stroke the Most High's hand. Don't push the Most High's hand. Let the Most High deal because the man's going of the Lord. Just know that he's going to deliver. He always delivers. Right on time, man. Right? And so with that, I'm going to wrap this up. This is Brother Karatazala signing off. On to the next. Shalom.